Good morning from Shalom Acres. Let me give you a give you a different idea as far as maybe a squash or zucchini to plant in your garden. So this is uh, so these right here are our zucchini plants. Overall, they're pretty big. You know, comparable to probably most people or comparable to most. But I'll be honest, zucchini's always been one that seems like it's produced prolifically. And it gets a lot of fruit on it. I mean, as everybody knows, in this time of the year, a lot of people are giving it away and it's hard to get rid of it. But uh, I think the one thing I'd like to share this morning is what's potentially another option. So we've got some yellow ringneck squash here. Overall, not looking too bad. Squash bugs this year for us have been pretty minimal um, haven't had to spray anything yet and they seem to be looking pretty good but I guess the part that I'm not as impressed with is we're getting about the same yield this year as, as we have on other years off this squash and zucchini but it seems like to me when we talk about labor time and upkeep and all those things is there another plant that potentially would offer a better solution and maybe produce a higher yield and this year, we actually, I think we may have found that. We talked to some friends that live up, uh, live up north of us, and they said they had real good luck with called, what's called a lemon squash. Let's go walk over and see that now. But it's a, it's a very amazing plant. And the one thing I'll describe is, if you look at the size of these squash and zucchini here, they're maybe, I don't know, we'll just call them four foot four foot maybe in in uh, diameter but we'll go look over at these uh, lemon squash here in a second so we're walking up through our raspberries and heading right here to what's one of our uh, four lemon squash um, and you can just see there's Duke in the background he's just someone that we're kind of mule sitting for for a little bit but this right here is one plant. It's probably 12 foot or more in diameter. And it is just amazing. When we talk about upkeep and maintainability, we've had to water these one time. Um, and we've had to water the squash and zucchini two if not three times. If I look down in here, you can just see, you know, fruit, fruit, fruit you're gonna tell and somebody's gonna say well what does it taste like well the interesting part is these little guys actually have a thinner skin compared to the ringneck squash and they are just a little bit sweeter also so the skins thinner a little sweeter and pretty prolific and I'll just give you an idea of what we harvest so about every two days when we come down here off these four plants, we basically pick a six gallon bucket off of four plants. And I take the other eight plants combined and we maybe get about three and a half to four gallons. So off of four plants, we're picking twice as much, tastes every bit as good as a ringneck squash. And the other thing that these, uh, these plants are supposed to be really resistant to squash bugs. So that's one of the things that uh, when I was reading in Baker's Creek as far as seed catalog, that was one of the things that it actually talked about was how resistant to squash bugs these are. And I've seen some squash bug uh, eggs laid on top of a few of these. Don't really see a lot of squash bugs out in there, but I am seeing very good amount of production. Yeah, see right here? I don't know if you can see that or not, but right there, there are some squash bug eggs. So I like to take my finger and just peel them off. Just kind of smash them as I'm doing it. Don't know if this really helps me, but in my mind, it feels like I'm doing something to protect the plants. I try to do it without tearing the seed or the uh, the leaf too bad. But I mean, I know my shadow's getting in the way, but if you just look at this plant, you see the amount of blooms on it see the size you, know, you look down inside there and you just continue to see all the all the vegetables that are on there 
I mean the fruit that it's producing it's just amazing here's another one right next to it and you can just see and what we've done on these particular plants is this is an area that we uh, kind of have part of our orchard so we've got a real small one of our smaller uh, elderberries here and then we've got an apple tree right here and there's an apricot in between so we're doing a little bit of uh, a little bit of permaculture in between so we're using the, the height advantages as far as the trees taking up the ground cover beneath it just mainly to make sure we don't have any uh, minimize our weeds I had no idea that these were going to grow this big because otherwise I would have planted them a little further out but because they're, they're actually starting to encroach on the golden raspberries which these things have started off and doing amazing this year also so anyway just want to give you a little update give you a give you an idea and maybe challenge you a little bit to say is there traditional you know yellow neck squash uh, the plant you should be planting or should you be looking at something potentially different for your garden thanks again for watching shalom